how would you describe then the artistic process, the creative process from that Jungian perspective? Well, if you look at the Red Book, uh, the images that he, you know, beautiful art, and then he would also have his his patients draw art, draw mandalas and um, uh, draw their dreams out and the symbols and all that. I think that um, where I think Jung and Freud diverged and Freud was, you know, more of a like the, the mind is just kind of repressing and it's a storage, information storage, where Jung saw this as a live psyche. I think that's really where he said that's where the imagination comes from. I mean, um, Einstein was influenced by him and uh, um, a lot of these creative people used creative like these inventors and stuff use that imagination and creativity and visualization all of that is creative and um and so he was helping people find that creativity find that access Mm -hmm. and i think early most of us are are conditioned to be rational creatures we're conditioned to make rational decisions play it safe do what conforms with everyone else but then there's this other part of us that wants to live and i think that at midlife, that's where we feel that urge. Some of us feel that artistic urge earlier than others, but it's that idea, like you said, to create something new, to mm-hmm. create something new. And that newness is through us. And so that's what I see his individuation process yeah. is about. And then the tools he used were dream interpretation, symbols, um, working with visualization, like I said, active imagination, um, using drawings. Um, and then now there's, there's like sand play and there's a bunch yeah. of other like physical things that people do and even dance and um, and uh, just different ways to move your body movement uh, to create get into that creative part of ourselves. So it's out of that rational, linear, logical mind and yeah. into the, the imagination. Yeah, I think he, he just blew everyone away with this idea that the unconscious was creative. Yes. Uh, Freud had kind of taught everyone that uh, the unconscious was this repository of repressed and discarded memories and wishes that were unacceptable. Mm -hmm. But Jung said, no, there there are deeper layers to the unconscious that are are actually creative. Like it's its own intelligence. It's its own uh, mind. It has its own will, its own direction. And it is the source and fountain of creativity. Mm. If you look at great art, it comes through people, mm. not, you know, it's not the individual figuring something out and, and creating it. It's that they're compelled to express something deeper from within them. Mm. And that deeper layer is the collective unconscious. It's almost like we're all, we are all sitting on the top of the ocean. And this collective unconscious is all the creativity and um, all the possibilities. And then each of us has a, has a direct access to it. And we can kind of pull things up and bring them to the surface for mm. everyone to see <laughs> and say, wow, look what I've created here. And, and I think it's on the surface, we're all trying to remind ourselves, each other, that we're all one and that we're all creative and that we're all, you know, seeing other aspects of ourselves. So someone who could sing and, and perform beautiful music is still a part of us that, that's not maybe doing that right now. <laughs> But we're still, it's still a part of us, and we enjoy it. And being the listener is the audience for that person, the, the voice to be heard. So the art needs to be seen by others. It needs to be witnessed in yeah. a way. And so that's you, if you just keep the art to yourself, it's, it's not really, uh, it doesn't have its full extent of its creative power. 